Good morning and welcome. This is Tampa Home Talk. We're so glad you're here and welcome back for hour number two. You're going to like this hour, Leo. Yeah, it's about how not to get your house burned down. Yeah, well, you see Corey. So it's yeah, I see dead Corey. Giveaway. I always get excited every time Corey's in this dead studio. giveaway. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning. Um, but we actually, we have a great like supplemental guest for you. Yeah. Kicking off hour number one. So we'll introduce Mr. John Fom. I have it right uh, with the vent doctor. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thanks so much for, for joining us this morning. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Don't let me uh, throw you off there a little bit because I'm moving around here. So the vent doctor, let's talk about this because you clean vents, right? Is it yes. just dryer vents? Is it any other vents? We just specialize in dryer vent cleaning. Okay. That's all right. So Corey... <laughs> This is right up your wheelhouse, right? Like how many fires are started as a result of dirty dryer vents? So there is a number of fires every year that are started. We don't normally do the dryer vent versus this. It usually comes in as a home fire. And the biggest thing we see are these people that start their dryers, they leave or they go to bed, and then the fire starts in another part of the home. So it, they become bigger fires because nobody's there to really see it and put it out. So don't you guys determine where it comes from, though? Like, do you know if it starts from a dryer vent? Yeah, so they'll, they'll break that down. But, like, last year alone, I was just actually pulling up the fires report. We had over 293 fires in, uh, no, I'm sorry, 358 fi structure fires in Pasco County alone. So it's house fires. Yeah, so wow. house fires. So it's 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 a big thing. And do you know how many of those have. like were started by? You don't know how many started by a dryer vent, right? It no, could we be don't electrical have that. or yeah. whatever. It, usually, what happens during those? They're listed as mechanical fires because of the uh, the type of how the dryer works. So they're listed as mechanical fires. So it may not be broken just into dryer fires, but it's very evident when we go in. There'll be a lot of uh, lint, and it actually coats the back side of the dryer through the vent, and that's what ends up happening. Goes poof, dry your stuff everywhere, right? Yeah. So what's the process to actually clean the vent? Like, how does that work sure, for you guys? And like, how long does it take you? All that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but to kind of answer your question for Corey is, we did some research a few years ago. There's 16, typically about 16,000 dryer fires every year. That's nationwide. Nationwide. Yeah. And personally, we meet about two families a week who know someone whose house caught on fire, you know, either a brother or sister. And that's why they sister. called you? Yeah, that's why they called. Well, typically people call <laughs> for two reasons. One, because they know a cousin, a brother, a coworker whose house caught on fire, so now they're adamant about cleaning their dryer. But two, um, families typically call because it just takes a long time to dry. They're like, John, it takes like two or three hours to dry oh, a little laundry. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I thought and that was a heating element, no? No, typically, you know, your dryer is meant to do two things. It's meant to blow air and it's meant to heat it up. If it's blowing air and it's getting hot, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And typically your dryer is supposed to dry in about 60 minutes. But, you know, families will call and say, John, it's taking like two or three hours to dry a load of laundry. Yeah, that's so your first sign something's wrong, right? Exactly. And, and if they let it go, um, ultimately it will lead to a dryer fire. Uh, it will start burning out heating elements because it's like, you know, so the vent, what ends up happening is that vent goes from your dryer up the wall, up through the, through the wall, through the attic, and to the roof. And so it's just like this tube, and up on the roof there's that little candy cane gooseneck. Over time, lint just accumulates inside, and over time it's like blowing through a straw and plugging up or squeezing the straw. Air can't get out. So if it's air can't get out. It's full of dryer goop. Right. And slowly but surely, it fills up the vent, but then it starts to, because air can't get out, so it starts to back up, that lint starts to back up inside that dryer, and it'll back up, back up, back up until it starts heating, or, or it hits that heating element, and that's what ultimately catches on fire, because families are like, it just, you know, it's spontaneously combusted. It just didn't happen overnight. It they just weren't paying attention to the warning signs. It's exactly right. No, so. I have a follow-up question i'm only going to ask that because this says you're a doctor um does the use of fabric softener increase the amount of lint produced during a drying cycle so yes what we found so what ends up happening is that air that goes up it uh you know the the air is wet and damp it's that 
the air sticks to the side of the vent, the moisture sticks to the side, and the lint is what's sticking to the sides. But that dryer sheet, what we find is when we clean that, uh, that vent, the lint is kind of sticky. So the, the chemicals that are in that dryer sheet cause that lint to be a little bit more sticky. So yeah, it'll start Look at to that. accumulate. I said goop. It really is goop. It is yeah, goop. exactly. So, but I, I never answered your question. So what do we do or how do we do it? So what we do is and we... And how often should you do it? Exactly. So what we do is we go in s someone's home, pull the dryer away from the wall, disconnect the flexible vent. Then we run a rotary brush inside to scrub it out from bottom all the way to the roof. Kind while of like the fireplace guys, right? With a round Yeah, like brush. a chimney sweep, yeah. exactly. They're using a goose. Yeah, that's right. It's different, right? Here's, here's no, the so spiral. It's, it's exactly. <laughs> it's just like this little brush on these little sticks. It's like a, like a chimney sweep, essentially. And uh, what we do, it's actually really satisfying. We connect a, a transparent canister vacuum to it so the families oh, so can, can literally... See. Yeah, right? So it's really satisfying to watch this canister kind of fill up with... 15 years of worth of lint. After we clean it, we actually do a unique thing. We run a scope camera so the family can see that it's clean with oh. live video from bottom to top. So there's no mystery. And then afterwards, we do hop up on the roof. I was going to ask if you have to get on the roof or if you only do it from the ground in the laundry room. Yeah, so you know, companies that just clean up the inside or families will just buy this kit and clean the inside. But if you don't go up to the roof, it just gets really clogged up at that little candy cane gooseneck. And so you're only just doing half the job. It's like blowing through straw and you plug up one in the straw. The straw is clean, but the, the the tail end of it's just clogged up. So do people need to actually move anything or do anything to get ready for you? No, we do everything when we when we're there. We'll uh, you know we'll pull out the dryer, and in fact, everybody gets a free you know cleaning underneath their dryer because it's really dusty. There's always stuff that falls back yeah, here. I just cleaned socks. my laundry room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the other, like last weekend, it's come by with my pantry and there was stuff all in there. Yeah. So it's so much better now. It's all cleaned up and I'm like, I'm going to pull the washer and dryer out. There's stuff back there. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. 800 socks, 10, you know, laundry sheets. That's where so. all my socks are. Exactly. So we'll clean it for them. And so no, they don't need to do anything when... So how much lint typically comes out of the dryer vent? Because I know you said you have this clear this clear canister. Like how much? Right. So typically, you know, so manufa you, you asked a question. So manufacturers typically recommend every two years to clean it every two years. Well, we found that to be true for a household of four. A household of three with less people could probably get away with every three years. And two people could probably get away with four or five years. And if you have more or you have pets, does yeah, that matter? It does. So a pet includes an individual. So if you have three adults and <laughs> okay. one large dog, that's four individuals. So they should, they should really clean it every two years. Uh, so, But a home that's never had it done will fill up an entire, you know those transparent canister type of vacuums, that, yeah. that little canister? So a home that's like eight years old, that's never clean, been cleaned before, it'll fill up about an entire canister, a canister and a half. Drying issues start to happen about a canister and a quarter. Mm. And, you know, so typically when fam families call every two years just for maintenance because now they know better and so they're keeping up with it, it only fills up maybe a third of the canister. And that's really the level we're looking for. Uh, because, you know, the Are there times when you get there, you're like, you're like one dryer cycle away from a house fire. Absolutely. There are some that... Mm. Um, I disconnect that flexible vent and I reach my arm into their dryer and I pull out this snake of lint and and I, I, I'm amazed that they haven't had a dryer fire already. Now, now, how does that happen? I mean, I put my little screen in the dryer and it says and I, every, every time I dry, I take the screen out and I just rake it with my hand. It should and be catching everything. Yeah, it should yeah. be catching everything, shouldn't it? Right, so that lint filter is actually misnamed. That's, that lint filter is not really supposed to catch lint. Lint is fine just going out and shooting out in the atmosphere. That filter is actually supposed to filter out socks and uh, coins, <laughs> coins and uh, that dryer sheet because that dry if it, that dryer sheet gets past that filter, it gets sucked into the fan, gets all wound up in the fan or it gets shot up into the vent and gets stuck inside uh, the little flapper that's up on your gooseneck. And so, Do you ever pull up and you have that stuff like coming out the top and you're like, this is going to be good? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. What, is it, what does it cost to actually clean the dryer vent? So and how long know, does it take? So prices vary uh, from company to company. For, but uh, for our company in our main Land O'Lakes area, we charge $120. And it usually takes about 45 minutes 
And then, um, do, you, do you go on like maintenance plans or anything with anyone? Uh, so typically not. What uh, what we do is we send a uh, a complimentary, not complimentary, but just a friendly reminder yeah. uh, via text that hey, hey you have twelve year. dogs and three people. It's probably time for us to come back in six months. Exactly. It's just a reminder. <laughs> hey, it's been two years since your last cleaning. Or it's been three years, been four years. We send it annually, and at the bottom it says, "Hey, it's supposed to be cleaned every two years for a household of four, or three years for a household of three. All right. So when we come back, I want, I'm curious to know, like, if it affects the electric bill at all when you clean that thing yeah, out. But we'll answer absolutely. that and talk about it in depth. Off your number eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. We'll get your dryer vent clean. Back in a minute. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Now we're getting into the uh, more economics here. Um, here on Tampa Home Talk, Leo Kane's about to ask the tough question on uh, how much electric do I save by cleaning my dryer? So typically, here's so here's the good news. Here's the the good news I always leave our customers with. Do you with. really save on electric from cleaning your dryer? We do. So we have families that say that will call me back and say, John, after you've cleaned my vent. We are saving fifty to sixty dollars a month on electricity. It's because the dryer keeps running, running, running to yeah, close. Yeah, exactly. So what ends up happening is every time we dry our clothes, it should dry in sixty minutes. A family that's drying two or three hours, they're just wasting electricity. Every time we run it for sixty minutes, it costs a dollar in electricity. So a family that's running two or three hours per cycle, they end up wasting about four hundred dollars extra a year in electricity just to run their dryer extra. But wow. also, if it's clogged, if that vent is clogged, imagine blowing through that straw, plugging up that straw. That hot air isn't going up and out. It's actually dumping into their, seeping out of the dryer, dumping into their laundry room. And they all say the same thing. My laundry room feels like a sauna. Oh, so all that, so that's another indicator. Your laundry room's hot. Right, exactly. And then it runs up your air conditioning bill. So you're paying extra to heat it up, and now you're paying extra to cool it back down. So they will call back and say they're saving $50 to $60 a month. And... And as well, those repair bills on your dryer, they, we get calls all the time that, uh, hey, John, we just had a repairman out because we burnt out a heating element. We've been burning out a heating element every year. And finally, one of the technicians says, have you cleaned your dryer vent? Yeah, when's the last time you cleaned your dryer vent? And the sad stories are like, John, I didn't, I didn't even know, know that was a thing. That. Exactly. The even sadder stories are families that say, John, I wish I would have called you two or three weeks ago because... It was taking two or three hours to dry. We thought it was our old dryer, so we spent eight hundred dollars on a new dryer. One. Bought a new one, hooked it up, and it still takes two or three hours to dry. And then, so they start calling warranty, and they're like, "No, when's the last time you had your vent cleaned?" And they're like, "I didn't even know that was a thing." And so, it makes sense. I mean, Corey, when you see like, I mean, obviously you guys get a call. You don't really know what started it. You mm -hmm. don't know that till like you're done putting out in the fire, and it's like the aftermath, right? But how often do you basically see the um or, or what i was going to say is when it starts in the laundry room how quickly does the spread like what does that look like so i'll tell you something that's crazy a, a fire doubles in size every two minutes Ooh. Mm. so as you're if you're out you don't know what's going on it might be a neighbor that sees a black window some smoke coming out and like we were talking about as that vent goes up into the attic there's no fire breaks once a fire gets into the attic so it goes whew, all yep, the way across. It runs right across the house. It has open space, a lot of oxygen, and a lot of stuff that's flammable. Up a lot there. of a lot wood. Of those, a lot of wood. Yeah. A lot of those. Um, that's it. Steel trusses. <laughs> absolutely, steel trusses. I would love that just for yeah. hurricane damage. But um, but yeah. So and lint. No, is, it's not possible. There are no steel. Most houses, most residential. Houses I know they don't. It was just the thought <laughs> when he said the trusses burn and the you know. You want to see We're how many fix the world problems overnight? Really oh, they'd be more than double. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. <laughs> It was just a thought. Yeah. I did see a house one time on the water that was built with all these steel beams. It was well, so yeah, fascinating. That's different. All steel and all yeah. concrete. Yeah, you're not putting a wood flimsy house. I on know, the water. but it was mm -hmm. just fascinating to see. Like, as you could see all the steel beams in the garage. Yeah, that and that, that, sort of that fires up like an oven. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but oh, it yeah. doesn't burn down, right? No, no. But the, the drywall will that, burn. Yeah, the drywall and some of the stuff on the inside burns. So. Electrical melts. Yeah. So what's, what's one of the worst fires that you've seen where you guys ultimately decided later, yeah, this is probably caused from a dirty dryer vent? You know, one of the one of the saddest ones were, was not too long ago, actually, over in the west side of the county. It was a teacher who went to work, started her laundry for her kids, and got a call from a neighbor. We went in and it destroyed 
almost the entire back of the house by the time that the neighbor saw the smoke coming out. And the uh, when we talk about fire, not to get too technical, the smaller the particles, the, the faster they burn. Well, when you're talking about lint, it's it burns very fast, it's very easy to ignite, and it's, it's a flash. So you're getting a lot of heat really fast, and uh, then that dryer itself catches on fire, and now you have a mechanical fire as well. And it may still be running, producing heat as it's on fire. So it's like multiplying what's mm -hmm. going on there? Oh, Absolutely. My. Okay. So that's what we tell people. Never leave your dryer running when you're not at home. Uh, if you're seeing those long dry times, get those vents cleaned out. Uh, I believe the NFPA says every six months you should be so vacuuming. So while stuff we're out. on this topic, what are some of the other things? Let's just list off real quick some things that people should be looking for. That's a really good sign that their dryer vent is full. So the heat in the laundry room you guys talked about. Mm -hmm. The amount of time it takes to dry clothes. It going through more than one cycle. What else? There's also an error code that the new dryers have that uh, it says like E80L90, and it'll tell you that your vent is clogged. Some people just ignore Don't it. Don't look it up to see mm -hmm. what it is. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Is there anything else you guys can think of that's indicated? Kinda, you may hear squeaking and stuff like that um, from the, the actual dryer drum. A lot of times, if, if it's on the first level, it's a couple screws that they can pull off and they can see you'll actually, not only will it be through the vent because that air has been blowing back in, the entire inside of the drum and the motor, everything will have lint cake to it. And so you got to take a shop back and start sucking all that stuff out as well. Yeah, uh, dust, if, you're, if your laundry room starts to abnormally start to get dusty because that lint isn't going out, so it starts to make your... Uh, laundry room dusty also. So are you saying you would see it more like on the baseboards and on the dryer? And on the top of, of the dryer okay. because typically the lint goes up so you know families say John it's just all of a sudden really dusty. Also if your electric bill starts to just increase all of a sudden um, and uh, also a burn if you smell a burning smell on your clothes. <laughs> families on the clothes? Oh, or wow. just in your room but typically it's on your clothes. Corey, have you had anybody like say anything later, like little signs that they saw or heard or whatever that they're like, oh my gosh? I think the biggest thing is people are just surprised that it can happen. You know, we put out stuff uh, a couple times a year talking about dryer fire safety and stuff like that. And so it's around, but it's people one of those just things. People think, oh, it's not me, it's somebody yeah, else. Yeah, it, it can't right? happen to me, right? And uh, that's what the sad thing is. And, and people spend, you know, those are major appliances. You know, they're... People spend a lot of money on that. People, well, you know, isn't that guy that spent eight hundred bucks on a new dryer? Oh yeah, yeah. And good luck finding one. Spend hundred bucks to clean it. Good luck finding one. I know with COVID, it's such a thing. Yeah. Uh, John, are you? Can you give our listeners like if someone wanted to take action on this today, can you give them like ten percent off discount if they mention my name or Tampa Home Talk sure. or something like that? Absolutely, love okay. to do that. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, let me give out our off air number. If you're listening and you've been in your home, especially for a while, and you've never cleaned your dryer. You might want to call or text Dryer to 813-377-2775. Again, every year or two, not more than, what, five? You should have it clean no matter how many people are in the home? It should it should be cleaned every two years for household of four, three years for household of three. Okay. So 813-377-2775. We're going to give you 10% off. Or John will. If you mention Tampa Home Talk or my name or we get you guys connected, just call or text Dryer to 813-377-2775. So when it's coming at the top on the roof, is that a good indicator that it's full too or is that just a little something getting stuck? That is a good indicator because it's just getting starting to get uh, very accumulated in that vent and it's just starting to break loose. There shouldn't be that much in your vent that it's just breaking loose and ending up on your roof. So, Corey, what are some of the other things around the home that really cause a fire that someone doesn't think about, like the dryer vent, right, which we talked about? What yeah. else? Little well, things like that. We always talk about overloaded outlets. I'm sure if you look behind anyone's home entertainment center right now, there's a, an extension cord plugged into a power strip, plugged into another power strip that has a power strip that's plugged into a space heater, and they're just <laughs> so happy that it's working. Uh, that happens all the time. We see that electrical fires are our number one fire in the home. Um, people is dryer vent number two? Uh, it would be up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cooking fires are are a big thing. People leaving stuff on the stove that they don't pay attention, and that's just a simple. Hey, I'm a single dad. I get it. You're the kids are running around. You're trying to cook stuff on the stove, and they need this, and they need that. They need water. They need this. And can I go do this? And you get distracted. It's it's life. That's what happens. And so, 
those times I tell the kids, hey, you got to stay out of the kitchen. You got to fend for yourself for 20 minutes while I cook dinner. Yeah. And and that becomes a big thing as well. But uh, Or tell your kids, like, have some peanut butter and jelly while I'm gone. No cooking. Yeah, absolutely. I remember that when my kids were young. No cooking. We're not home. You can micro mac and cheese. That's it. You know, one of the craziest things we see during storms and uh, especially in hurricane season as we're coming up is people will be cooking. The power will go out. They... Everyone uses a, a flat top stove as a counter, right? Right. So they have all their insurance paper laid out. Then the power turns back on. The stove turns on and causes a fire from the paperwork laying on top of the stove. So you guys, like when we have power outages, you expect a spike in calls around that time? Yeah, that. And then towards the winter months, we see a lot as well when people are using space heaters or even uh, we'll see in uh, some areas of the county where people will leave their oven open and turn it on Yeah. And to heat the home because mm. um, we just don't have very robust heaters down here it's uh you know i didn't even think they really hardly sold those space heaters anymore but i guess they still do huh oh yeah oh yeah and and once again it'll be plugged into a power strip that's plugged into something else and it's left underneath you know your drapes and the next thing you know two o'clock in the morning we're getting a call because the house is on fire it's like a fireman's train wreck just waiting to happen isn't it Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. all right so yeah that it makes sense so those are kind of the biggies right the dryer vents someone um, with the multiple extension cords Mm -hmm. um space heaters we hear about that that's a good one as far as keeping like your stove area clean and the power going off and coming back on or i mean i can see that right where you're cooking something or you have something on or and the power goes off and you're like you don't even think about it how about Mm -hmm. rats chewing your wires (laughs) you know i haven't heard a whole lot of that like at my house (laughs) oh pat only patchwork (laughs) throw them in the sinkhole (laughs) yep just the rats just Just the rats rats. (laughs) and the wires all right this is tampa home talk again you can call or text dryer to 813-377-2775 and we're going to prevent that dryer fire today and give you a discount so the glory doesn't have to come visit your house absolutely trust me you want to meet him but not that way absolutely (laughs) (laughs) All right, this is Tampa Home Talk. We'll be back right after this break. Stick around. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Uh, Pat surprised us with a segment comeback. And I uh, apologize if you heard some of our off-air banter about going down to Captiva on we a boat. We always babble a little bit. <laughs> yeah, air. I'm excited. No, nobody, heard, nobody heard anything. Because Pat knows better. See, you're trying to give something away. It ain't there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so let's go back to, uh, we were talking to Corey about boats on the break. How Absolutely. Many boat fires are out there. And what causes a boat fire? Oh, do you guys respond to those? So we do respond to those. Um, we Especially through a houseboat. You're like, yeah. I want that job. I want to be the fireman that like gets on the boat and yeah well and it was funny because we were training in the city to the backyard when they're on fire yeah oh, yeah no I <laughs> that does happen I and those become environmental nightmares yeah because you're everything's going into the water so we try to boom it off um but a lot of times you got to think is it better to let the boat burn or is it better to put it out and depending on what the situation is it might be a less of an environmental impact at that time um you know to let a boat burn um because it's burning off whatever's on top it just it it depends and if you save it and it's not total they're gonna want to fix it and oh i think Mm -hmm. i'd probably rather have my boat burn and file an insurance claim i hate to say that you're letting it burn there's gasoline there's oil it's fiberglass there's plastic that you want to let all that burn so if you don't let it burn where's it going to go oh in the water Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so is the environment environmental impact that's the same way um for instance if a fuel tanker or something like that catches fire on the interstate that on-scene commander, that's what his job is, is risk versus reward. So if we put it out and there's a 1,000 gallons of fuel, the road's already destroyed. The ground, yeah. Is the fuel going right into the water or are we going to let it burn off? So that's it just depends on what their tactics are at the time and how quickly they can knock it out. And if, if it's a small fire, can we plug a fuel leak or something like that? And so those guys have to make a decision quick, right? Very, like, very quick. quick. Have you ever made one of those decisions? Unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah. which way did you Hopefully decide? it was the right one. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's just it's a it's literally a decision by decision basis. So if we're on the interstate and there's a fuel tanker going, what's the runoff going to be? Um, you know, if we do put it off, is there going to be a massive fuel release? And then where's that going to go? Can we control the fuel release, or is it going to go right into a drain that's going to drain, you know, to a tributary or water? And so there's all kinds of those thoughts because you know you're going to have to repair the road. You, you may have to shut the roadway down for a while. So you know you're already going to have to do those repairs. So am I preventing more damage or less damage by letting it burn? It makes sense. Yeah. So, and is, it, is, that the, is that ever the case with a house or no? 
No, a, a house we're going to put it out yeah. as, as quick as we can because you don't want to spread it to the neighbors. And Absolutely, all that. Yeah. the the real the decisions there we call it risk. You know, your risk versus reward. We're going to risk a lot to save a lot, risk a little to save a little. If somebody's inside a home or we have reports of someone inside a home, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we're in there as quickly as possible to save that person's life. Uh, do, do you guys have times can. where it's just really hard to get in the home? Like, how do you get in <laughs> the Absolutely. front door and everything's locked and you got the latch well, locked? They use the, front. the trampoline and they hold it below the window and ask them to jump. <laughs> No, well, what's seriously like? No, seriously. No, it, it's. No, you don't. You don't even know if there's anybody in there. <laughs> so yes, we we do, and that's what the guys train on all the time. Uh, the forcible entry, uh, those tricky situations. What do they do? They break a window and get in quick, or what do they so, usually? Once again, where's where's it at? Is breaking that window going to drive the fire further into the home? Is mm -hmm. it going to pull it into a different room? So that's all. That's what these guys and girls do all this training quickly. for. Mm -hmm. So are you guys a big fan of those baby on board stickers or those pet inside stickers? On? Absolutely. Where was the best place to put those? I, by baby on board is obviously on the car. So but, I mean, most people want to put them way, way up at the top. Where does smoke go? Right to the top, oh. right? We can't see it. So we say, if you're going to do one of those stickers where, hey, we have this many dogs inside, we want them low, maybe by the door handle, because that's where they're going to go. They're going to feel the door to see if there's heat. I never thought about putting first. that there, like mm -hmm. for the pets and stuff. I never thought about I that. I would never think about putting it all the way up at the gable. I never thought about putting it on there at all. I don't think I've ever even noticed it at a house. I'm going to be looking for it now. Mm -hmm. We had a guest that was talking about this several weeks ago. But I don't remember that for some reason. I don't remember ever seeing it at a house, is what I'm saying. Oh. No, I've seen the I've seen the this many pets inside or beware mm -hmm. of dog or Yeah, I well I've seen beware of dog, but I'd never seen like oh we have three dogs and two cats and five mm -hmm. kids, you know. Or yeah, and they're they're little stop sign looking stickers. And if you put them in there, if they're crated, put where they're crated. Um. If it's hey, they're crated in the bedroom. Well we know, all right, we're gonna go right to the bedroom, we're gonna look for pets. Because a life is a life. We wanna make sure that we can yeah. save and we actually um, thanks to uh, Central Pasco Veterinary Clinic, every single one of our trucks have pet masks on them. Oh, look at uh, that. We actually have several vet techs. They used to be vet techs that worked. And um, so we've we've been successful with uh, saving uh, animals that were dead when we pulled them Aww. out and have been able to revive them. So they're, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that any any one or animal, any life inside is saved. In, in, one of the Even cutest fish. things I've ever seen is, is their uh, fire station Dalmatian in a fire suit, running into a house and saving a kitten. Oh, really? <laughs> Where was that? I missed it. Did you see it? <laughs> no. Setting you up for the okie doke. I could totally see that though. <laughs> I could see you all posting something like that. We would. We would. At least if it was staged. We've had foxes. Fox. Fox eye. Fox. Foxes. Fox. Yeah. Fox. Yeah. Fox. Um, that have gotten into dumpsters behind the fire stations and our firefighters have captured the fox and it was a mayonnaise jar it was stuck <laughs> on her head and <laughs> they're trying to get to the mayonnaise and uh they actually were able to pull the jar off of the the fox's head and <laughs> and release that reminds me of kate the other way the other day on her way to the office there was a cow stuck in a fence and she stopped to try to help the cow get oh, out of the fence i'm yeah. like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> little hundred pound kate yeah <laughs> gotta make sure it's not an electrified fence yeah that's <laughs> look for the yellow taps yes <laughs> so well, let's roll to mr steve dumas he is with damage recovery restoration let's talk a little bit about how you actually remediate some of this fire damage and how soon do you get there when Corey's crew is there or do you is it always way after the fact well thanks uh, first for having me today um, <clears throat> when I get the call and it's different times uh, it's never a good situation we we come to a house and we see you know the the homeowner the victim I mean it's a very traumatic situation you know I mean, you see the house and you see them and you know all their belongings and their their attitude just completely changes and um, so um, depending on the time we're usually multitasking and doing several things at the same time now our number one thing is to stay away from the the fire department and let them do their work because they have i mean their number one goal is to make sure that that, that fire gets out and they can save lives do you guys usually get there that soon um we don't do it unless we've been called to of board course. up a place or something yeah. like that um but uh, we're usually coming after the fact, after the fire department has left and somebody calls us to, to take care of them. And um, so we're dealing with the homeowner and trying to get them in a situation to where, you know, they can 
because the electricity uses is turned off. Right. You know, they don't have a place to stay. They, we try to find out, um, you know, their insurance and, and all that entails. So and then also let me ask a question before we dive in. Corey, if you guys, there's been a fire, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you want everybody out. You guys have put the fire out and that sort of stuff. And now it's not habitable, right? A fire restoration company like Steve's has to come in and do you know rehab on the property because of the fire damage is the owner allowed to like go back in and get their things or like how does that work do you guys block it off i, I, I don't think i've ever asked you that so it, it all depends on what the uh the scenario is once again base by base is it safe to go back in the home um and have, after any fire investigation that sort of stuff absolutely and and that's what we do we'll turn it back over the homeowner one of the things that we do that is it's a great partnership it's one of the best partnerships ever the american red cross Anytime someone's home is burned, um, we ask them, you know, do you do you have somewhere to go? You know, and if not, how many people are in your household? We'll get them in touch with the Red Cross. They'll provide them with clothing. They'll provide them with shelter in the short term. And then when one of these companies can come in, they work with their insurance company to find them long term. Um, well, I think it's human nature, right? Like if you're house, because sometimes it's not totally destroyed. It's 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 remediate. It's remediable, right? Mm -hmm. So I think human nature is, oh my gosh, let me go grab my wedding photos. Let me go grab my baby photos. Let me go grab my passport, birth certificates, that sort of stuff. And that's one of the biggest things that we do when we go in is called our salvage and overhaul phase of the fire. So once we've stopped the forward progress, we're going to make sure we can save everything we can in the home. Um, I've personally been on fires where we're throwing world war ii medals out the window into the yard Ugh. because we know that's stuff you can't Somebody's replace Somebody's gonna want it yeah you yeah. know um wow pet ashes are huge people it's it's funny you can burn a million dollars and they want their pet ashes yeah uh, you know they want these pictures and and things off the wall and so we go we try to have great care on if we see something in a in a room that's involved with fire and we can pull it out we're gonna pull it out we bring in what's called salvage tarps so if we're in pulling ceiling down in a room and there's all their furniture's there, we'll put down tarps over their furniture. So as we're pulling down the ceiling, it's not destroying more in What's the home. What's left, yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. So how long does it usually take? Like, well, let's talk about what the fire restoration company does and how long it takes to do that. I imagine it depends on the extent of the damage. Right. It depends on the, on, on the uh, severity of the damage. Um, when I was in high school, I had my house got caught on fire okay so i kind of been through where you how you feel when things happen how bad was your fire uh it started with the a kitchen it was a kitchen fire and uh, it went from the kitchen to the living room maybe like half the living room and then into the garage was it like a cooking kitchen fire yeah okay. it was my brother and uh, he left it there you know so what we were talking about earlier you know things like that happen um now this goes back before Moses okay so back then we didn't have the technologies that we have today the cleansers and the deodorizers the machines right all the things that we have today to salvage a lot of the things that we have and so um, as we take things you know in in, in sequence uh, you want to secure the house from looters uh, in case of their secondary damage from let's say you had to go through a window or through the uh, through the ceiling you know, we want to tarp and secure, and the insurance companies want us to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a sister company called 1-800-BOARD-UP, and we're actually in a position to where we help the, the victim. We'll put them up in a hotel, whatever we got to do. We got an overnight bag that we give them. So we try to get them situated to where, and part of my job, I think, is to, to kind of explain to them, because all they see is black right now. I mean, right. they're just totally you well, know. the walls and everything are covered, right, with soot and the black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so, like, you know, we... we we try to let them know, okay, here we are today. This is the, pro nobody plans to do this or go through this, you know. So we kind of give them a visual of where we're going to be in a week, two weeks, a month, or whatever it's going to take to get to get the house uh, back in, in order. And so we're working with them. Uh, when we do insurance uh, claims, there's usually at least three estimates that we do. There's probably more like four or five. Um, one's going to be for the content cleaning. One's going to be for the structural cleaning. One's going to be for the repairs of the structure. There will be one maybe for water damage because we're putting water on to dry out the house. And so I work with the adjusters and all different insurance companies. And, uh, you know, our goal is to put everything back, you know, and get them back to where they were before and um, repair their lives. And you mentioned, like, with... Um, pictures i remember my mother you know the only thing she was concerned about when it happened to us you know was my pictures i want my pictures you know so yeah. uh and i was running like around Corey the house. said a million dollars can burn or you just want the simple things right, right 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 so um 
you know, there's there's the uh, when we start looking at um, all the different phases of what we do, you know, we work with the homeowner and try to get them, you know, to understand that okay, you got your possessions. Here's mm-hmm. some things that we can salvage. Here's some things we can't. And then, of course, we itemize everything. We take lots of pictures yeah. of every wall, everything, and it's just it's a tedious. Hold that thought, Steve. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more. And I'm actually going to give you guys a tip, probably something you didn't think about. When we come back, just a moment. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome welcome home. home. Oh, we none of us have said welcome We've home. We've not done it. Chi- oh, welcome chickle. home. We need Adam's shiny face as the reminder to do that. This is Tampa Home Talk. This is Tampa Home Talk. All right, so remember, I was saying I was going to give you guys a really simple little tip, okay? So, and this is, usually I give a lot of like homeowner and home purchase and like real estate related stuff. This still relates to that. One of the things I see that people skip very, very often is renter's insurance mm-hmm. so they either don't get renter's insurance or the landlord doesn't require that they get renter's insurance and i will tell you somebody very near and dear and close to us that you've even met before Corey, oh. actually had a house fire wasn't a total damage but a ton of smoke and water soot everywhere all over the house like everything just about destroyed inside all the furniture all the clothes like no good no renter's insurance and so if you're not a homeowner and you're listening you're a renter the owner's homeowner's insurance does not cover any of your things just so you know mm-hmm. uh, it's very cheap to get i mean probably a couple hundred bucks a month adam can actually quote that for couple you hundred bucks a month i mean a year thank okay. you Leo. Yeah, was just yeah really cheap mm-hmm. i mean the grand scheme yeah. of things very very cheap very inexpensive for good coverage and um you know it's they just don't requ- require it so many places don't now when we do tenant location we make them get renter's insurance mm-hmm. they can turn around and cancel it right after but we're trying to at least do them a service so if something were to happen you know they would have some protection with the things that they own well, and uh, it's a shocking thing a lot of times i remember my mother had a house fire uh, when i was a kid she talks about it and she said that you know she, my uncle was the one that actually rented the place to us and she went to him and she said well what about all my things inside and he said well did you have renter's insurance you know she was just a young mom didn't know mm-hmm. and so that's the thing that you know most people don't know don't realize don't think about but if you're a landlord especially and you're listening to this which is probably more of the demographic than a renter listening right there might be some renters but i would say if you're listening you're probably more an owner Mm -hmm. and and you have some properties you're renting make your tenant carry renter's insurance it will really be a blessing and so in this particular fire what happened was it was something that sparked the homeowner um not again it was a rented property right the homeowner installed the dishwasher did something wrong because you have water and electrical kind of mixing right i would definitely recommend (laughs) you hire a professional to do that but basically something underneath and or with related to the dishwasher caught fire Mm -hmm. and so you would know better than i would how that spreads and what that looks like but it, it was as opposed to like this big blazing fire that we always think it is it was more smoke damage yep yep and sometimes it may hit a water line and put itself out you know that that may happen but one of the things you're talking about uh, when you're talking about renter's insurance and how important that it really is if you're living in a condo or you're living in an apartment it may not be you that causes the fire we had a fire the day after christmas in trinity where somebody was grilling on the porch shouldn't have been doing it we had nine units have fire and smoke damage that did wasn't even they did nothing wrong so it may be yeah it may be your neighbor or if you're on the first floor, the fire happens on the third floor, we got to put a lot of water in there. Where's it going to go? It's going to go right down through the second floor and down into the first floor. So it's, it's very, very important. And I can't tell you how sad it is when you have a home that is destroyed or a home that is severely damaged and that person is looking at you like, I don't even know where to start because I never had insurance. Right. And it's how, how soon do they figure out that they have to have renter's insurance to have that covered? Is um, that like right away when you guys are there? As far as... Like, well, you're, you're talking to the families, right? And all their stuff inside is destroyed in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Maybe from an adjacent property where the fire spread or whatever happened spread. Um, and you're talking to them like, oh my gosh, all my stuff is soaked or soot or mm-hmm. smoke or whatever. Um, do they figure it out usually while you're there? Or do you think that happens more later? I think a lot of times people, they want to play the game. You know, the, the it'll never happen to me. I can get by, you know, without this, or they're underinsured. 
Um, you know, there's there's certain things in life, unfortunately, that we need to pay for to make sure that if if something bad happens, we're taken care of. And even when, get some basic coverage, like yeah. twenty bucks a month kind of coverage. Yeah, something to help yeah. out, and and we do our best to cause as least amount of damage as possible. Um, but damage does happen. Yeah. What, so what was on the topic, Steve? What actually removes this? Uh, smoke and soot from the walls when it gets in there and it's on everything how do you guys clean that what gets it off how long does that take well we have again all kind of cleansers deodorizers machines that kind of stuff we start usually with um and you mentioned about soot you know it could be a small fire soot goes everywhere Mm -hmm. and it hits you know clothing and then you got the smell to contend with as well and so um we usually will start with the contents uh, remove the contents and just go through every item and clean them, cleanse them, uh, clean them. Um, textiles, if they're not burnt, we can get the smell and the and the soot out of those. Um, Do you ever, ever have people that are trying to actually live in the home while you're trying to restore it? Do you get that? Yeah, there's certain people. If if this big enough house and it's only like in one section of the house, and we can block off, you know, and, and let them live in the house if, if that's what they choose to do. Uh, but um, we start with the contents, and then once we remove the contents, we remove those the burnt parts of they got they're really producing a lot of the smell. Then after that, it's a matter of cleaning the structure, walls, uh, the vents, the air ducts, you know anything and everything that's going to keep that. And you got to do you got to be very thorough with everything because if you don't, then you miss one spot. Well, you're going to wonder where is that smell coming from. And with some people, you know, it just sticks in their brain, you know, in their, somewhere where, you know, they, they always remember that smell. So you really got to be thorough, yeah. you know, to, to get everything that's, that's there. There's certain smells that are very distinct that once you smell them, you can't ever unsmell them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's hard to make them go away. So what, what sort of things should people be bringing if they have to vacate their home and let somebody like Steve go in there and, and do a, a restoration cleanup? We usually will get a certain amount of their clothing and have them, you know, cleanse real quick, and then they can stay in their hotel or wherever they're going to stay um, while we're doing the restoration work. Um, obviously, you know, things like guns and medicine, uh, those type of things, we want them out of the house. We want to secure the house. Birth certificates, passports. Anything, yeah, those type of things that they're going to need on a regular, you know, daily basis. And then, um of course, we itemize everything and kind of keep it organized for them, you know, in certain places, whether it's at a storage unit or uh, a pod or something like that, while we get the house back to... What, what's the typical condition. time that it takes to rehab a home that's... I know it depends on the damage. Kind of a loaded question, but... It could be a few weeks. It could be a year. Oh. You know, it depends on, on how severe the fire is and a lot of it you know you're waiting on the insurance you know the yeah. adjusters and things like that a lot, and a lot how, of waiting right how, how fast you know things are going to move we typically can get out of the 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 cleaning in a few weeks that's good it's the rebuild that takes a little bit longer all right steve Corey, thanks so much for joining us gentlemen thank you for thank having you. us real thank quick you. if you've not caught my book have you seen it yet Corey? selling through relationships i have in fact uh, i was with you when you were going over the cover art and it looks amazing thank you it's available on amazon please check it out and i always say if it's not worth at least four stars which leo seemed to think it was it was an impressing compliment i'll give you your money back there you go. So t- call or text book to 813-377-2775, and I'll send you an autographed copy. All Thanks right. so much. Bye for you now. Love where you live or we'll fix it. Welcome home. Love.